this imposter syndrome sometimes sneaks itself into our lives and into our head and into our beliefs and our identity of who we believe that we are. And it feels pretty crappy and I don't like it. So what do I do when I'm feeling this way? Here are some of the things that I use to help get this stuff figured out. Stop comparing yourself to everyone around you. Or better yet, stop comparing yourself to everyone you're scrolling by on social media. How they look like they have their lives together. This coworker over here, look at how great their life is and look at all these promotions that they're getting. Look at this mom over there that she literally has like the most well-behaved children. She's got it all together, but me? No, no, I'm a hot mess. I don't belong here. I'm not good at my job. I'm going to be seen. People are really gonna realize that I'm not that good of a mom and it's scary. I don't want them to see those things about me. So I always have to keep this facade or this front up so that I won't be exposed. Stop looking at everything as a failure. Take it as a time or a moment that you can learn and something that you can grow from. I know failures can be scary, the what ifs, the unknowns, and it's terrifying and it can be paralyzing. So think to yourself, what can I learn from this? How can I grow? What am I going to do differently? Because if you like it or not, you're gonna screw up. But what you do after that is what really matters. Talk to someone about it. If you really feel like this is something that's intruding into your life on a daily basis or keeping you back from so many things that you want to grow in and experience in life, then there might be some deeper rooted issues that are going on that you just haven't addressed and that are sneaking out in this way. Maybe you had an over controlling parent. Maybe you were compared to your siblings. Maybe you, I don't know, just failed a lot. Whatever it may be, it's okay to go and get some help and talk to someone that can help dig out these things or these deep rooted issues in your life that will stop keeping you held down and stop keeping you suppressed and going after those things and being able to be proud of what you have accomplished and what you have done. Stop telling yourself that you're a fraud because you're not. You are here, you are present, and you have something to offer. So stop it. 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 Stop, 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 stop. You're not a fake. You're not a fraud. You got something going on. And don't let everyone else miss out on what it is. Keep a log of the things that you have done well. Write them down. Think about them, focus on them. Use that momentum to help encourage you into that next thing that you might be scared about doing, but saying, look, it was a change, it was difficult and it was hard, but you overcame it. The number one thing that we can count on in life is that things are going to be consistently changing. It never ends and it's not going to because this is just the way life is. Figure out what it is that is actually holding you back. There might be layers to this. So that's why talking to someone can be helpful. Write about it, journal about it, come up with some solutions, come up with how some of those things that you are being held back with might not even be true or real, and they just need to be set aside. God has only created one you. You're the only one that can offer what it is that you have to offer. God has created you for a reason, and you in this time and this space and in this season, you have lives that you are going to impact. You are responsible for the legacy that you are going to leave behind. So what are you going to do with it? One of the worst things that I could imagine happening is laying on my deathbed and looking back and saying, what did I do? Was I so captive by fear and, and failure that I allowed myself not to try new things or not even to, to have those opportunities to fail in order to experience more growth? Because if you allow those fears to paralyze you, then that's it. You're going to be staying in that. Sometimes it's just about taking that next step one foot in front of the other. I know it can be scary and I know there's a lot of unknowns. I have a lot of things probably spinning around in your head that's holding you back from whatever it may be. For instance, starting this channel. I 
did not want to do this. I was so nervous. What if people I know see this? What if people I know um, are going to be like, what are you doing, Sierra? Like, come on, you really think that you have something to offer? And so all these voices in my head are going off and it really kept me for a long time paralyzed and still because I was scared and nervous. Then. I really felt that, like God was saying, like, no, you do have something to offer because the impact can go far greater than just my immediate circle. I decided to take that step. Even though I didn't like it, even though I'm kicking and screaming, you just sometimes need to go for it. Where does growth happen? Does growth happen when you're sitting on your couch comfortable or avoiding things in life? No. Growth happens in the uncomfortable situations that come or that we place ourselves in. It's time for you to act in the opposite and take that leap of faith. Try that new experience. See how it goes. Journal about it. Write your experiences down. So if this spoke to you at all and you feel like you could maybe relate to it, hit the subscribe button down below because there's more coming at you and I want to be able to continue to encourage you. Hit the subscribe button. You can do it. I know you can. I know you can hit that button. So go for it. You got this. Step out of that comfort zone. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Bye.